Here it is, my friend, See Jesus in the Old Testament. It's out, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other places like that. I'm so excited, aren't you? So this new book, here it is, See Jesus in the Old Testament. Testament. And you can get this in the paperback version. You can get it in the Kindle or ebook version on Apple iBooks or Kindle. And you can also get it in hardcover. So all those options are available. Uh, please, if you get this book, please write a review because this will help it spread this good news that Jesus is in the Old Testament, right? The good news of Jesus is throughout in every book of the Old Testament. And we want to get that out to everybody we can. So please leave a review if you buy it on Amazon or anywhere else, because what that does is that that gets the algorithm to send it out to more and more people. So this is so fun, you guys. Thanks for partnering with me on this. Um, yeah. And by the way, there was a little glitch. Uh, if you pre-ordered, there was a there was an upload on the Kindle, the e-version book, and it was the Tola instead of uh, this book, Sieges in the Old Testament. Now, if that happened to you, please private message me or comment down below. I'll give you my uh, email address and I will send you a paperback version for free to your address. I know I know how many of them you are and where what country you came from, but please do that and I will make it right with you, I promise. Okay, so... Let's continue on, my friends. So let's check out what is in this book, See Jesus in the Old Testament. Let's find out right now. Here we go. Okay, my friend, here it is, the book, and here's what it has inside of it. So it's going to be in the same order that Jesus put it in, which is the Tanakh, right? The same order. And this is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 24. These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things that are written about me in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Now, what did he do there? He put it in the same order as the Jewish Bible today. Jesus was very Jewish, my friend. So let's continue on with this. So these are the books of the Tanakh. That's what you would say in Israel when you speak of the Jewish Bible, the Tanakh, T-A-N-A-K-H. The T-A stands for the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. The N-A stands for the Navim, right? The prophets. And the K-H stands for the Ketuvim, which are the writings like the Psalms and the Proverbs, things like that. So Jesus said, written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And they were, and they still will be, my friend, because there's more coming. So here's the books of the Tanakh, right? The, the first five books written by Mo Moses, which is also called the Torah or the Pentateuch, if it was the one written in the Greek, right? But the Torah is the original in the Hebrew. And it's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The Navim are the prophets. So it starts with Joshua. Interesting. He's a prophet, Joshua. And it goes into Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. These are the major prophets. And then there's the 12, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So this book has a lot of stuff from Zechariah, a lot of stuff from Isaiah. It's, it's a lot of stuff from Ezekiel that I think you'll be interested in. And then the last portion of the Tanakh is the KH, right? The Ketuvim, which are the writings, which are primarily the Psalms, Proverbs, and Job, and some of the other books. We have Ruth in this book. We went through that and Daniel very carefully because there's a lot of stuff about Jesus in that. And uh, he's actually even a type. And I went through and, and made sure we had the chapter about or section about how he was a type of Christ too. So the very first word of the Bible shows us Jesus. Yes, the very first word. And the the Hebrew is not from left to right, but you read from right to left. So the very first word is the bet. Second one's resh. Third one is aleph. And then you have the sheen. Then you have the yod and the tav. This is the very first word in the Bible, which means beginnings. In beginning is what it means. And, and here it is. So the very first word bet means could mean sun, right? It's a dwelling place or sun. And then 
Resh is man because the bet and the R together make bar. That's why you get son. But it's actually a shelter, abiding place. Remember, Jesus, Jesus said, abide in me, right? It's like a tabernacle. And then it's the person, Resh, the person. And then Aleph. Aleph is associated with God himself, the father, right? Aleph, it speaks of power. And then the sheen. The sheen means destroyed, right? Or consumed. And then the yod. The yod is the hand by his own hand and this is the ancient paleo hebrew right here these these were pictures right and so that's what you see here these are like teeth this is like the arm or the hand and then the last word of the very first word of the bible is the tav right the tav and it's a cross and it was meant to be a sign a covenant or a symbol of ownership and this is what even in ezekiel's time how they made the tav it was an actual cross isn't that amazing you guys so that's just the very first word of the bible and you're going to see that in this book and hey by the way again don't forget leave a review if you get this book whether it's kindle version e-version apple ibooks paperback or hardcover make sure you leave a review my friend because it's going to help spread the good news of this jesus is in the old testament out to the world so it's so exciting so let's continue on in our presentation and check it out so the next one is joseph my favorite character in the bible joseph or yosef if you're in israel these are wall paintings and by the way the book has lots of illustrations like this uh, and it's just it ties right in with the stories but he, this is actually a wall painting at Saqqara, Egypt, where you can see the yellow pigment on these guys um, meant that it was the Hebrews or Semitic people. They were not the Egyptians. And here they are in new clothing coming back to this. Over here, you can't see it, but there's an oversized official and these two Egyptians are handing him a document. And there's all these Semitic or Hebrew people coming back with new clothing. And many scholars and archaeologists believe this is actually Joseph's family coming back to him. This could be his brother's and maybe some of his other family members, and they're coming back to him. Here you see one of them tied up right here. He's bound. It's actually, you can see it over here too in the yellow pigment, but he's bound right here. And uh, maybe that's Simeon. Remember, Simeon was bound by Joseph. So there's a lot there with Joseph and Moses because both of them, my friend, both of them had Gentile brides, right? They were they were rejected the first time by their own, right? And then they had to, ended up having Gentile brides in a Gentile land, just like Jesus most, for the most part, today has a Gentile bride. But then what happens? God suddenly and unexpectedly has them both save Israel during a time of great trouble. Joseph had the seven-year time of famine over the whole face of the earth, which speaks of that tribulation period. And that's when his brothers come back to him, bow down to the ground, and he forgives them and saves them. He already has his Gentile bride with him. Now, it's the same thing with Moses' story. He already had his Gentile bride. He was also rejected by his own. They said, who made you prince and judge over us? So he went to the Gentile land. He saved seven, seven Gentile daughters around a well. That speaks of the church, right? Revelation, there's seven churches. And he marries one. And then suddenly and unexpectedly, God calls him back to save Israel during a time of great trouble. So you could see it right here in the presentation. This is some of the stuff that it goes through here in the presentation. Herod, who was a type. A uh, type, this Herod type king, who is the Pharaoh, right, tried to kill uh, all the Hebrew baby boys in the region, just like Jesus' story. He was rejected by his own. He had a Gentile bride, and he saves Israel. You're going to see lots of that in the book, my friend. And 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 there's even more. There's archaeology, and, and and how Moses was a type of Christ, but also this is the Pharaoh, the actual Pharaoh of the Exodus. It's Amenhotep II. The reason you know that that's him is because the Bible itself gives you the answer. And this is the whole idea of this book is to use the Bible to explain the Bible. Because the Bible says that when, when Solomon's temple was complete, it was 480 years back, right? I might be 450. I don't, I don't know. You'll see it in the book. <laughs> but it goes back to this date of this Pharaoh right here, you guys, this guy right here, Amenhotep II. And here, this is an actual mummified, uh, his his actual body found in the tomb. And they found these, these giant, these big tumors all over his body. And they can't explain it, but it, the Bible says that there was the boils, right? Well, those boils could actually mean tumors. 
And it's just very interesting that this was the guy. There's a lot of evidence towards that. And the book covers that. And then we go into the prophets, the Navim, right? So it starts with Joshua and how he was a type of Christ. Judges, you're going to see Gideon and Samson and different stories and how they illustrated Jesus, Samuel, the kings, right? And then you're going to see Isaiah, lots of stuff in Isaiah about Jesus. And then Jeremiah, of course, and Ezekiel. There's a lot of stuff in Ezekiel about Jesus and, and pictures of him even in the future my friend. And then we go into the Psalms, right? The, this is a book I wrote, Tola Shanin. It's about the crimson worm of Psalm 22. And this book will go into a lot of detail about that as well. How Jesus is illustrated in this tiny little grub that climbs up a tree, attaches itself one time in its life to give birth to its offspring, and then it dies on that tree. And it stains that spot crimson red, forget this, three days. And then it turns as white as snow. Just like Isaiah 118, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they will be like as white as snow. Though they be like crimson, that word is tola, they shall be like wool, like lamb's wool, pure white. And that's the whole thing here. And this book goes into detail. This one really does, but this book, See Jesus in the Old Testament, my new book here, goes into great detail even in the Psalms and in Psalm 22. So, hey, I think this is so exciting. It's going to be so fun. So here's a, a close-up of that crimson worm. This is actually what it looks like right here um, when, it, when it's ready to give birth and it, it turns this color. And by the way, you guys, did you know that this crimson worm was used to make the dye for the temple fabrics, for the curtain, the veil of the temple, the priestly garments, the scarlet yarn that's tied to the scapegoat? all pictures of Jesus. It's just an amazing thing. So, all right. So that's it, guys. And this is the book. I'm so excited. Here's the hardcover. It has a little bit of a different image on the front and the back. This is a hardcover. Here's the paperback version. I tried to keep the price as low as I could. I think on Amazon, it's the lowest. I think it's 12 uh, 97 for the paperback and like 22 or 23 for the, for the hardcover book and only 377 for the ebook or the, the Kindle version. But again, please don't forget to leave a review of this book. This will help spread the good news that Jesus is in fact in the Old Testament, my friend. Hey, and if you want to watch it for free and you don't have the money for the books, you can watch this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. And you can see pretty much all the same stuff in this playlist right here. So click on that, my friend. And God bless you. Don't forget, leave a review, my friend. All right. Love you guys.